How you doing? Awesome. Doing doing well. Doing well. Thank you for uh, for joining today and making the time to uh, to meet with us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Let me see if I can prop this up a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. Yeah. Ne never mind the psychopath walking around in the background. That's just my wife. No worries. No worries. No, it's perfect. It's, uh, it's okay. In uh, in twenty twenty, we're allowed to have uh, some background in the uh, the sessions. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. You know, uh, some. It's funny that just reminded me. Um, I read something a little while ago that I've been sharing with people. Uh, 2020 has been so screwed that going forward, when someone wants to, you know, say, oh man, that sucks, or oh man, that was the worst, all they're gonna say is, dude, that that that's 2020. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gonna be a new saying. Yeah, I can't that's, yeah. I'm actually I'm gonna start using that going forward. If I if you hear me using oh, it on my yeah. interviews, you know where I got it from. Oh yeah. This. You you step in a do, a pile of dog poo and it's oh. 2020. <laughs> Matt, thank you for joining uh, Movie Junk again today. Uh, I can't begin to uh, to say how much of an honor it is to, to have you on. Uh, thank you again for, for joining. Uh, shucks. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, um, it's really uh, a phenomenal thing what's going on with Cobra Kai. And, uh, you know, it's it's just really cool. Yeah. And, you know, for the folks and the fans of, uh, of Cobra Kai, you know, I know you don't need a uh, big introduction, but we have Matt Borlingi, who's famously known for playing the, uh, probably the most famous uh, pawn shop owner, um, probably in, in TV history, uh, Lyle. And um, he definitely has some amazing scenes uh, with, with Johnny. And, um, you know, I also, um, you know, selfishly know you um, from the Police Academy TV show. And yep. I, I'd watched that uh, show, you know, growing up and I was a huge fan of uh, Police Academy. And um, your, your role was essentially the, the Mahoney role. You were kind of taking over that role in the in the TV series. Um, but you've also done, I mean, a ton of stuff. I mean, you've been in the industry now for, you know, roughly 35 years, you know, acting. You have also um, have some experience writing and, and directing as well. Uh, and also I've known you from the uh, Jeff Foxworthy show as well, too. So you don't need a, a big introduction here. Well, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I, I've been kicking around for a while now. And, you know, um, it's an interesting business to be a part of. Uh, it definitely is. It's a roller coaster. It has its ups and downs like any other, you know, lifestyle or or uh, career. But, um, yeah, going back to the Jeff Foxworthy show, you know, that was a really really fun show to work with uh jeff foxworthy and Haley joel osmond you know this uh i see dead people you know you, you look at him now and you know he plays these really great like caustic acerbic guys you know he, he was doing entourage for a bit um that, that was a lot of fun to work that show because you know jeff and i would would just sit around in between rehearsal takes or whatnot and just sing Bob Seger songs together. And, you know, it was, a, it, was, it was a really fun time. It was a fun time. And Police Academy was, you know, that was a trip. I mean, yeah, I was basically the Mahoney role. Uh, my name was Rich Casey on the show, but it was modeled after that. I was the Steve Gutenberg role. And, um, you know, that, that was uh, a little bit more of a, a challenge because that was up in Canada, in, in Vancouver, British Columbia. And um, I wasn't always, to be honest, I, was, I wasn't always really straight in the head. I, you know, I was dealing with some personal things. And, you know, the fact that as American actors, we weren't really protected by our union up there and I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, say anything negative, um, but it, it was a challenging time in my life that took a, a little while to, you know, to get past. And, uh, 
you know, after that, I, I kind of just kind of dropped out for, you know, a couple of years. And um, when I felt I was ready to, you know, get back into it, uh, I came back with, a, you know, another soap because I started my career um, with all my ch children back in the early 90s. And, uh, you know, it was kind of, what's the word? Not therapeutic, but it was kind of um, not either coinc coincidence or coinky dink, as I like to say. Um, it kind of came full circle. That's what I'm trying to get to. That when I, when I, when I needed to kind of take a break from acting and whatnot, when I was ready to come back, then it was you know to uh, another soap, Bold and the Beautiful. And then after that, I did Days of Our Lives for a little while. Only a soap opera would make this guy the mayor of a city. Okay, <laughs> but uh, you know it. It. It's been, it's been a pretty cool ride. And, you know, now, now with Cobra Kai, it's, I appreciate what you said about my character. I'm, I'm blessed and grateful that uh, Lyle, but nobody even knows his name, you know, on IMDB and whatever it says Lyle, but everyone knows the pawn shop guy, you know, so. I, I'll even hashtag, you know, pawn shop guy. I, I have a little uh, uh, Facebook page, uh, Cobra Kai, hashtag pawn shop guy. And um, I feel really blessed and grateful that, you know, this character has kind of become one of those fan favorite roles that, you know, it could have been nothing. It, you know, I could have been, you know, in one scene and, done but what what the producers hey Dudley come here look say hi come here no no come here get it Dudley is my hundred pound yellow lab there he is there hey, he is hey. get him <laughs> good doggy oh he dropped it here catch it anyway <laughs> um awesome the the just the fact that you know uh the producers, God bless them, um, and the viewers saw what Johnny, well, what Billy and I were doing, and they just said, uh, we'd like more. So uh, I can, it's, you know, there's no secret at this point, I can say that I am in season three as well, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, we got lucky. I mean, we filmed season three towards the end of last year. We had the raps, the rap party and everything. I think it was, it was November or December. Dudley, that's not going to work. You, you can't make those noises. He's got one of his stuffies. Okay. We're, we're dog there. friendly here. It's okay. We're dog friendly here. Oh, listen, he, he's my boy. He's my boy, but I just don't want to hear the squeaking while we're trying to talk, <laughs> uh, you know? So um, we were very fortunate in that we had filmed season three already yeah. and uh, Netflix, Netflix originally was, you know, one of the potential suitors for the show, but YouTube just came in strong and they went that route. But then YouTube uh, was changing their format and getting back to, you know, what YouTube is known for and getting out of scripted programming. And, you know, every the stars aligned and Netflix said, yes, please. Especially because with no production going on because of COVID and that we already had season three in the can, edited, ready to go. That was a, uh, that was a really uh, just one of those God smacks, you know? Yeah. yeah, and it's just when you watch, and I was, the reason why I, jo I joined YouTube uh, Red, I think it was at the time in premium, was because of Cobra Kai. So yeah. that was the reason why I joined, and I actually, you know, still still maintain the account. But when you, when you watched Cobra Kai for the first time, you just felt like this was a Netflix show. Like, in, and it yeah. was a matter of time before it was going to go on Netflix, and, and look where we are today. 
Yeah. What's what's amazing is that for all the new audience, you know, they're they're watching Cobra Kai for the first time. And, you know, what I mean, Cobra Kai has been around since, you know, it's we're going into almost three years now. It's just it's an it's a amazing opportunity for bringing in the new audience, because I think the first episode brought in over 100 million views. It was something ridiculous. It broke records. Crazy. So it's, it's like every season that was like season one for the new audience, it's a new season for them. And yeah. Guess what? You got season two right after that ready to go. And then guess what? Season three is right around the corner. Yeah. So, two months. Yeah. So no, that's, that's great. I mean, that was actually one of my questions I was going to ask because I was, we have, we have to get you back in there for season three. So thank you for, uh, for sharing. Ding, and, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing. You know, you got these, um, uh, these characters, like also Homeless Lynn, you know, Susan Gallagher, we, we actually yeah. did an interview as well. And, you know, a, a lot of these characters that, you know, appear in, you know, one or two or a few episodes and also Armand, um, the, um, the landlord. Um, so we did an interview session as well. It's like these characters have a few episodes, in some cases one, but they're just such a memorable part. And that that's credit to the, to the writing, you know what I mean? So it's, very rare that you know someone that appears in one episode can be s such a fan favorite and then so memorable um it's just all credit to the writing it is it is i mean i mean look when 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 they asked me to you know go on tape for the show for the role um when i read the material and i imagined i wasn't thinking me you know i i wasn't i i felt that they were looking for a completely different type. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to just do what I do. And if they dig it, they dig it. And if they don't, they don't. And when I got the, the call saying, oh yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're playing this role. Um, It was, it was really cool because it was one of those moments where it was like, you know, as an actor, you can get type or typecast or stereotyped in different things. And it's really hard to break someone's original vision of what they write and how they, they see this guy. And it's really a treat when you can show them something that maybe they hadn't thought about before and where they say, wait, where, where'd he just do? Wait, rewind that? Oh, okay, yeah, that's the guy, you know? So the greatest um, compliment they paid me, the, 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 the writers, um, John, Josh, and Hayden, uh, when I went back for season two, I was kind of off in the wings in the background while they were all at Video Village. If you're not familiar with that term, that's where they have all the monitors set up and you know all the director's chairs and they're all on headsets and they're watching and then discussing and the da da da. And they were all doing that, working on a different scene and a different set. So I was maybe 30 feet away, just minding my own business, thinking about what I was gonna do with the scene and uh, once they broke and cut and were ready to move on, uh, they came walking over to me to say hello and, and welcome me back and everything. And the greatest compliment they could have paid me, they were like, they said, you know what? For months now in the writer's room and everything, we've been laughing, just imagining how you're gonna say these lines. Uh, because if it was like season one, you know, and to hear, to hear guys like this who have such a wide and successful breadth of experience between the three of them, to, for them to say, you know what, we, we've been laughing amongst ourselves for the last few months, just imagining how you're going to say this stuff. That was pretty darn cool, you know? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's a great, great place to work and, and a great team to, you know, be fortunate enough to do, uh, to be part of. Yeah, and you know, with the with the show, you know, you got this new generation of, of kids, and then yet you still got 
some of the a lot of the nostalgia and the callbacks to the 80s mm -hmm. and it just it just feels like you know when you and Johnny have your scenes it's kind of designed for some of the older fans like kind of the, the nostalgia stuff and I, I see there's more of a connection with you guys and that's why I, I do hope and I, I know you can't share this but I do hope in season three um, we, we do see a little bit more depth to your role because I think they're one just because you're so talented I know there's there's so much that we could see but I feel like there's just some hilarious scenes that we could see with you and Johnny that we've yet to explore and that that line that you mentioned that uh, you know this isn't the geek squad I actually laugh at that even more because I used to work at Best Buy and I know the type of support questions that people used to ask so that just gave me an additional laugh um, just just hearing that it was just great some, something so simple was just so funny yeah yeah and and you know you touched on something about the nostalgia and everything a lot of the folks that i meet and you know it's kind of i've this sounds weird to say but you know i've ever since the early 90s with all my children i still get recognized for that and to not because it feels like another lifetime it doesn't really, you know, bring me anything. It doesn't bring me, you know, any feeling of joy or, or anything. But, and not to say I don't appreciate the fans of, you know, of all my children and everything, because without them, I, I, I was nothing. But it doesn't, it doesn't really give me a feeling either way. It's just, yeah, that was a long time ago. I, you know, I appreciate it that I'm flattered you remember me this late, uh, this, you know, long a time after, but to have people like stop me these days and be like, I know, I, I know you, I, I know your voice, I, Cobra Kai. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You're the pawn shop guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun because we're talking about a completely different generation. Now, you know, you, there's so many, and I mean, I'm, I'm putting you mid twenties, I'm going to guess mid to late twenties. You know, I, I was at one point, but I'm actually I just turned 32 now, but I'll, I'll take the mid twenties. I, I get mid twenties uh, more than I get well, early thirties. So listen, compared to me, you're still a sperm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Um, yeah. So, uh, it's cool to, you know, meet the older crowd, you know, the, the original Karate Kid fans that were seeing it, at, you know, as young guys like I was watching it. And for to, to the person, everyone loves the nostalgia factor, the, the 80s music, the fact that Johnny's stuck in the 80s and, and, and all the callbacks and, you know, how they tie. What was fascinating is you don't really have to be a Karate Kid fan. You don't have to see the movies to love the show and understand what's happening because they bring in old footage so well and, and give the backstory. They, they just did a really good job with this show. When someone tells me, oh, you know, yeah, we saw Cobra Kai, it's good. I'm like, yeah, it is good. I'm glad, you know, you, you got the opportunity to watch it because it is a darn good show. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you touched on that, you know, with the uh, bringing in the old footage and um, also bringing in uh, unused footage, which give us uh, additional context to scenes that and just movies that we thought we knew everything about. But seeing some of that unused footage is is just unbelievable. And it's it's amazing that, you know, the show is being written, uh, you know, by, uh, you know, fans of the show. You know what I mean? So it just it, it gives a, a much uh, uh, much do fan service that you wouldn't get from you know folks that were just kind of given a job so to speak kind of like quentin tarantino you know was just a a movie buff who worked at a at a video store yeah and realized i'm sure i can probably do something pretty cool and look at him you know that's how he got his start he was just a movie buff and listen john Josh and, and uh, Hayden, yeah, they were Karate Kid fans. And for them to come up with this twist of, you know, let's just flip everything over and 
bring this originality to it that's going to appeal to the faithful Karate Kid fans and bring in the newer fans with you know all the teen storylines and whatnot. It's just so clever, you know. And then you know the fact that they go out of their way. I noticed, I noticed with each of my episodes, they they almost use my scenes to set up what's going to happen the rest of that episode, you know, to set up the, and that's, you know, that, that's a really cool, the way they, the way they, you know, they go out of their way once they realize that, you know, they built this world that's working. Now, how can they continue to use each part of that world, each part of, you know, every character that they've, you know, they, they've brought in because again, they, they didn't have to keep using me. Hey, you know, I'm the, I was a funny guy saying, Oh, it's, it's well loved, you know, in the first episode with L McPherson and uh, the, the sports illustrated, but to go out of their way to say, okay, now we got to find something else for him to do and to set up that, you know the rest of that episode and it's the same way with season three they uh i'm a tool to set up the storyline for that episode so it's a uh, i'm grateful i'm grateful that's awesome no that's and we're as much as you're grateful you know we're we're lucky as fans and um we we can't wait to to see season three and to also hear that season four is already back in training. Um, you know, we saw, you know, we saw the outlines of all the episodes being completed and it looks like the, the scripts are gonna start getting written. So, I mean, there's, there's no way that we're not gonna see you in, uh, in season four. Um, well, no one's told me anything yet, but uh, knock, knock. I mean, knock. you are, you are uh, Italian, so unless you get whacked <laughs> in season three. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, you know, I just, uh, I'd love to like get into the dojo with Johnny because you know he he harbors this anger towards me. You know, I'd love to like that scenario where it's like you know he's fine, he finally has enough, and he's like, all right, you know what? Come see me at the dojo, and you know, me to like take take like a ninja outfit that someone pawned to me and. She- show up ridiculous looking in, in head to toe ninja outfit saying I'm ready sucker let's go and then just get my ass kicked by Johnny yeah I, I actually did have a, a question uh, from the fans actually and it was um, you know are you a uh, team Miyagi-Do or team Cobra Kai uh, <laughs> I, the fans. I am uh, Miyagi-Kai there you go. So that's unique. I haven't had anybody from uh, Cobra Kai or Karate Kid answer with that. That that's actually a good one. That's another one that's uh, that's that's unique to you. So I'm yeah, do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? What else? Uh, there's another thing that I have out there right now. Um, I don't know if you're a gamer, video games, or if any of your audience are gamers. I, uh, I'm a voice in a, uh, a new video game called Mafia Definitive Edition. It's the remake of the original Mafia video game. And uh, I play Sergio Morello. And you know, we did all the mocap and everything and my face and all that, but with, co- with COVID hit and the, 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 uh, the, the video development team, the graphics team was affected by it. So they never got around to making my face look exactly like me. So I, I look kind of different with like a pencil mustache and whatnot, but you know, you hear my voice and you know, it, it shocked me, you know, the worldwide interest in that video game too. You know, when I first Googled it, I was like, and I Googled my character, Sergio Morello, there must've been, you know, results in like 40 different languages. Yeah. So um between mafia 
and Cobra Kai. I just wish that COVID didn't have all the game cons and, and comic cons and all the conventions shut down right now because you know, th those are two high profile projects that I'd love to be meeting, you know, the fans on and, you know, asking what's your favorite thing, what's your favorite part of this and, and all that stuff, you know, but hopefully soon, you know, maybe sometime next year, we'll be able to get those, uh, the conventions going again, because that would be a lot of fun. You know that that's awesome to hear because I actually played and owned the original uh, Mafia game. I'm, my favorite genre of movie is uh, the I don't know if you could see you know the Godfather and I heard you sure. play houses right there. Um, sure. So I mean and and you know for me you know that those are my favorite genres and um, you know any Mafia game um, you know back that was out you know the Godfather video game and they even made a Scarface video game I actually uh, own them. Um, so that, and that's actually something that that you mentioned. Um, or I wanted to touch on is that you do have a very distinct voice. So it, that's awesome that, uh, and that you're there being used in, in a game like that. And I actually would like to see you in more of those, um, you know, mafia type roles. And that'd be awesome to, uh, to see you. So the fact that you're in the new mafia game, that's, that's great. And I'll share that with, uh, with the audience as well. That way fans will know that that's, uh, that's you. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to be sure to, uh, to get it as well. It's, it's, unbelievable looking if you liked the original mafia if you look up trailers on youtube i mean it it looks it's gorgeous it blows me away what they did with this game i haven't played it yet but uh they, they sent me you know my my own private download and whatnot but um you know my wife feels that you know the boys are probably still a little young to be you know, playing that specific game. So, because I mean, it is, it's, it's violent. It's, yeah. I mean, you remember the original mafia. Now, if you just, if you can imagine that game on steroids and filmically, you, it, some parts of it don't even look like a game. They just look like a beautiful movie. It's crazy. Yeah. I, um, I actually was always kind of secretly hoping that uh, the game would eventually turn into a movie or even a TV series. Right. Um, but that's cool that we have the technology of today, um, you know, bringing that type of game back because, you know, it, it does get a little, um, I don't want to say cliche, but sometimes just getting a video game of a movie that you're already used to because you kind of already know what to expect. Um, but right. it's good to get, uh, you know, these, these, uh, original story games with the genre that fans all love. Um, I actually, that's why the uh, Mafia game was actually one of my favorites um, back in the day. So I'm, I'm pumped uh, to play the new version. Yeah. Wait till, wait till you see it. It's really incredible. And it's a complete remake. So you're not going to necessarily be surprised by anything except how gorgeous it is. And the playability apparently is, you know, a hundred times better. And it's, for all the platforms, you know, it's for Xbox and PS4 and all that. Whereas the original was only on PC. Yeah, yeah. Um, just touching on something, you mentioned that you, uh, you know you were on. And obviously, it's known that you were on the Bold and the Beautiful. Did you work at all with uh, with this guy right here, Sean Cannon? Did you guys were you guys there during the same time or? Yeah, and Sean, Sean and I are friends. You know, okay. we actually we we actually did a movie together several years ago called uh, Jack Rio. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, Sean produced the movie with me. He played, you know, his role. I, play, I played the, the title role, Jack Rio or Tommy Jameson. It was a dual role. It was a kind of a Dexter kind of kind of role. Which you were on Dexter too. Uh, very little. What I filmed and what actually got on TV were two different worlds. Yeah. You know, I mean, when I saw myself, I was basically a glorified extra, you know, and I was disappointed that, uh, you know, they, the scene didn't, you know, the two scenes didn't play out the way, you know, we shot them, but hey, you know what? That's, that's the movie biz. Yeah. I also selfishly uh, would hate myself if I didn't ask because you also did a few episodes of Married with Children. So what was it like working with, with Al Bundy? The best. 
the best. Ed O'Neill is just such a gracious guy and so talented. And to just watch him like walk onto set, he'd walk in as Ed and you can watch the body language change. And, you know, he would just become a little big. You know, it was, it was really immersive, a role for him. He would just completely change, you know, he'd be laughing, da, 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 and then just literally the shoulders would roll forward and he'd become out. Um, one of those episodes, uh, Enemies, was actually a pilot for a new TV show that uh, called Enemies. And it was the Married with Children spinoff that was going to replace Married with Children in their time slot the following season. And it was really, the audience reaction to it was so strong. I thought, this is it, you know, this is the breakout show that, you know, I haven't had yet. And as luck would have it, you know, they changed the um, president of the network between TV seasons. And this guy came in from CBS thinking, I'm going to class up Fox TV and, you know, change the way things are done here. And, you know, we didn't make it on the schedule. He chose some, what was it? It was a terrible show. Oh, Polly Shore. I think it was Polly Shore show that, you know, went like six episodes or four episodes and then was gone. Enemies was the antithesis to friends. It was like the anti friends show, this group of friends who were always at each other, you know, and it was, it was really good. And that was one of those near misses just because a suit came in thinking, I'm going to mix things up at this network. And next thing you know, what would have been probably one of their, you know, big hits just one bye bye. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Yeah, and that and that happens, you know. And, and also another um, what, what I've been kind of learning with you know some of the actors that I've interviewed that have done uh, TV shows that sometimes the time slot that you're in can kind of dictate uh, the ratings that you get, um, the timing as far as the you know what time of the year it gets released. It could be a, a lot of the shows that you know I thought were great. Um, you know, didn't do very well and only lasted a few seasons. And a lot of it was due to scheduling, timing yeah. issues. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just kind of the, the nature of the business. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, listen, every moment in your life, in your career, whatever, leads up to the moment you're in now. And I just, I just try to live my life like that. Just, you know, take the moments, be grateful for them and be grateful for waking up the next day, you know? Absolutely. Um, I did want to ask, I know we touched on one question already from the fans, but I did have a few more that, uh, that I wanted sure. to get uh, to you. Um, so one of them we already touched on, um, you know, is Lyle, Team Miyagi-Do and Team Co uh, Cobra Kai. And you'd mentioned- Miyagi Kai. Miyagi Kai. Miyagi Kai. Uh, another one is, and I'm, and I'm assuming that, um, you know, you were a Karate Kid fan, uh, you know, during the 80s, um, you know, between Karate Kid 1, 2, 3, and uh, also got next Karate Kid as well. Um, do you have a favorite uh, Karate Kid movie? I like the first one. I yeah. like the first one. Um, not such a big fan of the whole in Tokyo storyline um but i really liked i mean obviously I, I liked the first one and i never saw the next karate kid which is will smith's son right um that was the remake oh uh, that was the remake right 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 oh next karate kid was that the uh uh hillary with, swank, uh, hillary swank. Yeah. right i never saw it i never saw it and i didn't see jaden smith's uh the remake either um, but I encouraged my kids. I got my kids watching. I have a 15 year old girl who doesn't really care about any of this, but I have 10 year old twin boys who get a huge kick out of 
you know, the fact that I'm on this show, you know, my daughter rolls her eyes because her, you know, her friends recognize me or say stuff about the show. And she's like, oh, God, I don't want to be that girl, you know, but um, the boys enjoy it. And they uh, they really liked the movies. You know, I want them to after they watch the show, I said, now I want you to see where all of this came from. And they love the movies. But yeah, for me, definitely number one. Yeah, I mean, that's it's kind of like um, asking somebody, you know, what's their favorite Rocky movie? Everyone is right. great, but like the originals, you know, for, for me personally, part two is my favorite. Rocky two is my favorite out of all of them. Um, but, you know, Rocky one, it's just it's neck and neck between Rocky one and Rocky two, um, because after Rocky two, he kind of became like a superhero. He was just jacked and, you know, yeah. and, and every movie was, you know, bigger than the next. I right. like when he was just this humble, humble guy. And, you know, my favorite line in Rocky two is when, you know, he's in the ring with Apollo and, um, you know, it's the last round and, and he's just saying like, that man is great, but like, yeah. he's great. You know, he's going toe to toe with him. He's also great. You know what I mean? So just yeah. how humble he was. Um, yeah. I, just, I love that because it just feels like, you know, what if one of us was in the ring and we're hanging like, that's how we'd feel. Um, yeah. And that's how Karate Kid 1 was to me. It was just Daniel, you know, was still finding himself. Um, you know, he was still, you know, finding his skills and, you know, learning karate. And um, I don't want to say he was an expert by Karate Kid 3, but it was just, you just kind of felt like you connected with him in the, in the original movie. Yeah. On there. Um, what else? Awesome. Yep. And then uh, next question, what movies uh, inspired you? To get into acting were there any movies that inspired you growing up or were there any actors um that you kind of um you know learned from and kind of uh, you know connected with and, into your journey into acting yeah I, godfather movies um brando pacino de niro Orlangi. i mean we all end in vowels so yeah. those were you know definitely the guys that I saw as the greatest, you know, just so, so real and, and um, impactful. Everything they do, you know, even, even when they're doing nothing, they could just be sitting there listening and you still, I can't take my eyes off them. I don't care that there's someone else in the scene. You know, I'm watching them just be. So, you know, that a lot of people don't realize that a lot of acting isn't acting, it's listening and reacting. And the way you choose to react becomes the action, you know? So um, those movies, as far as like, you know, didn't influence, you know, later in life, I mean, my favorite movie of all time Forrest Gump, hands down, because it's so perfect. perfect. It's so perfect the way they make all these real historical events work for this simple minded man telling his story like he was actually part of these historical events. It, it's the perfect, perfect movie. And Tom Hanks, I mean, there's a reason for that ask that Oscar. I mean, he was unbelievable in that movie. Yeah, I think part of the um, the stipulation um, before he accepted the role was that because he knew this was a historic movie, um, he had said that he needs every historical scene to be accurate. So they didn't want to rewrite any. He didn't want anything to be re rewritten. He wanted to be exact. I think that's what, you know, I don't, I don't know if, uh, you know, Lyndon B. Johnson, you know, saw anybody get shot on the butt. Right. <laughs> I think that's, that's probably the exception. Um, but just every scene, you, you can just imagine that, you know, Forrest could have been there. And yeah. I agree that that to me is a, is a perfect movie. It's there's, it's up there with just a, a few that can even be in that, that class. Yeah. Yeah. On there. Um, 
so you mentioned the uh, the Godfather. This is this is actually now my question. You mentioned the Godfather. Um, have you seen uh, the Irishman, which is the, the new collaboration with De Niro and Pacino? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've interviewed a few folks that were that were in it. I, I'd love to, since that's a genre of yours that you like, I'd love to get your thoughts on the Irishman. I know there there are two camps as far as that movie goes. Some think it's just boring retread of you know a story they've seen before and others think it's brilliant and I happen to think it was pretty damn good uh, I love the performances in it and I mean it, it's it's a strong film long yeah but I mean I watched it in two two sittings you know one night and then the next night but no, very, very good movie. I, I would give so much to be involved in movies like that, you know? Yeah, yeah I know, um, you know, when I asked that question about, uh, you know, the, the perception of, you know, actors of the Irishman, a lot of them is, they say that they wish they could work with Martin Scorsese, um, you know, kind of being, and he's actually making uh, a movie with uh, De Niro and, uh, and Leo. I, I think it's called Flowers and the New Moon, or I forget the name of the title, but they're, work, they're collaborating uh, together. So I think they're going into production soon. So maybe, you know, get you, get you in there. I, I guess my invite got lost in the mail. <laughs> awesome. Um, Matt, I can ask you a ton more questions. I'm, I'm actually having a blast, um, but I want to save some time for, uh, for part two. You know, we do this again. And I want to be respectful of your time as well. But no, just thank you again for uh, for joining. Um, I'm really excited to uh, to see um, you know what Lyle has in store for us in season three. And I'm also even more excited that you're going to be the voice in uh, in Mafia. So now it's going to give uh, I'm sure all the Cobra Kai fans more encouragement to to go out there and get. It's 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 a beautiful game, and yeah, it's violent, but it's it's cinematically. Gorgeous, but listen, I, I really appreciate you, and I really appreciate all all the fans and followers of Cobra Kai. Um, I'm blessed and grateful to be here for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining, and take care. God bless. You too. Thanks. Bye.